Hi everyone, there's been some talk in the Facebook group that I have, um, which is called School Yoga Teachers. Um, join it if you're not already a part of that community. Um, all around wellbeing days, because Children's Mental Health Week is coming up and there's been lots of chat in the group about that. So I thought I'd do a little video um, all about wellbeing days, because I think there's been a bit of confusion with some people about what they are. I've received a few messages from people asking about um, um, what they are and and when when to use and things like that. So, firstly, what what is a well-being day? So, a well-being day, as I see it, is an opportunity to work with lots of um, lots of children within a setting in one day, or it could be multiple days if it's a large school. And it's usually around a theme of some sort. So that could be a theme to do with something that the school are doing themselves. It could be something that's happening nationally or even something globally. And so it's an opportunity to work with lots and lots of children all in one day and these are really really great because they're they're very rewarding and um, you get to work with lots of different children um, and give them the experience of working with you because unfortunately if you run um, extracurricular classes you probably notice that there's only specific types of children that will come to those so it's a great opportunity to to reach a whole broad group of children who may not necessarily get the opportunity to work with you. It's also a really good opportunity for a school to see what you're like and consider whether they may like to work with you again in the future. So they could decide to have you to deliver some um, extracurricular classes or they could even get you in to teach um, yoga within the school day, which is what I do in schools two days a week. So, um, yeah, that's what a wellbeing day is. When would you have a wellbeing day? Well, there are so many different um, special days, weeks, events that you can tie in a wellbeing day with. It feels like there's something pretty much every every other day that's like a, a particular. It's this day. It's a donut day. It's so you know all sorts of different random stuff. Um, but I've just written a little list of ones that I like to. Um, contact schools about and those are children's mental health week which is in february uh, emotional health week which is also in february stress awareness month which is april world health day april the 7th mental health awareness week which is in may global wellness day which is in june national sports week that's a really popular one that's in june world well-being week again in june World Mental Health Day, which is October, and Stress Awareness Month, November, Anti-Bullying Week, which is again in November. Those are some particularly good times that a uh, wellbeing day would fit in really nicely into the school. But many schools do their own particular health weeks, so it's always worth contacting a school and letting them know it's something that you offer and to keep you in mind if there's some the special event that they're running and they'd like you to come and deliver a wellbeing day for you. And so um, how do you structure a wellbeing day? Well, there's quite a lot of things to consider when you're structuring a wellbeing day. Um, and so to actually plan one, you're going to need to know how many classes are going to participate, um, what timings there are in the school day. So when the school day starts, when the break times are, when the lunch times are, when the home times are. And these might be different for different year groups um, because schools depending on their size may have different timings for, for each year group um, you'd also need to be considering where you will be where you'll be um, delivering the sessions for the well-being day and whether that space is going to be used for a different purpose so many schools um, use their halls in a multi-purpose way which means that they have um, that their hall is used for PE and also lunchtime many schools not all schools but many schools that's the case and so you need to consider about if you are using the hall do you need to pack away before and after and before lunch and set up again after lunch because that will really impact how you organize the day 
Um, so some schools will send you a timetable. They'll be happy to organise what classes go when and they will just send it to you. Or other schools really appreciate you to do that as part of the organisation. And so um, I quite like planning planning when I'm going to do what. Um, but it really, it, it just depends on the situation, whether you plan it or whether the school plans it. Um but something to consider is how long can you how long will you teach each class for so i found obviously if you're teaching lots of different kids different classes throughout the school day you're going to be really limited with time anyway but just some general timings that i have found at work for me when i'm working with children are the shorter amount of times for the younger children and longer amount of times for the older children so this means like nursery and reception children, I might teach them for 15 to 20 minutes. That might be enough for them. Um, year one and year two, which is key stage one, I would give those normally 25 to 30 minutes. And lower key stage two, so that's year three and four, I'd give them 30 to 45 minutes. And then upper key stage two, so that's year five and year six, I'd give them 30 minutes up to an hour. Um, but if it's just a one-off day, then I probably would just give all children half an hour and be done with it. <laughs> but just something to consider that, you know, if you're thinking about timing and you're struggling to figure out who can fit in where, then you can make those those sessions for the younger children can be, can be shorter. Um, so, yeah, that's how I organise how long each class gets. Um, I've got here some tips for making it manageable for you because there is no denying the fact that wellbeing days are exhausting. They're really tiring um, because it's lots of children. It's lots of energy, isn't it? It's really, you know, holding space for a lot of people and there's a lot to consider organisationally. So here are my top tips for making it as manageable as it can be. So it might sound really obvious, but make sure that you've got all of your documents in place and ready to hand for when you arrive at the school. So um, there's, I've written a whole checklist on this. So check out the freebie, I will pop it in the comments. There's a freebie checklist that you can download to figure out that you've got all of the things in place that you need to. If you um, realize this is quite time consuming and you know creating the policies and the risk assessments and the letters and all of the rest of it and you'd like um to not spend hours and hours doing that and you'd like to use mine then um i will put a link to that in the comments too so that's just a document bundle that you can download and you can edit it and make it your own and that has like all the policies and all the letters and things like that but make sure that you've got your documents and your certificates with you when you arrive at the school also make sure that you arrive in plenty of time to set up. So I always find that when I'm setting up somewhere new, it takes me much longer than I think it will to set up the room because it's like, oh, it's a different space and you start setting things up and it feels a bit weird. And yeah, so give yourself enough time to arrive and set up and then have like a few moments to kind of ground yourself before the day begins. So the more time, the better really to, to set up. Uh, also, again, it sounds sounds really obvious, but um, it's something that I have once forgotten. <laughs> and that is to have the outline of the day, you know, your kind of timetable of the day right there next to you so that you can refer to it because halfway through the day, it's easy to be like, oh, who am I teaching next? And when are they coming in? And oh, how long have I got with this group? And especially if the timings go a little bit awry with, with you know, groups coming in at a time different to planned. So make sure that you have that to refer to. Um, also teachers will ask you because they will be unsure themselves. So that's always really useful to have. The next thing is your energy. Your energy is the most important thing. So you need to make sure that you've got your snacks, you've got the drinks, you know where the toilet is if you need it. Um, and that you are taking breaks in the day for your own regulation. And that's because, well, it's really obvious why that is, you know, if we're all exhausted, then the day will be less, um, 
less enjoyable for you. So make sure that you are powered up. And also I recommend um, joining in with the breathing practices of the day. So when you're running a class, make sure that you join in with the breathing practices so that you stay regulated and your nervous system is getting what it needs to. My next tip is don't overcomplicate things. It can be really tempted to bring in all of your different props and all of your different things and have different million different things for different year groups. Don't do that. It, it's not going to end well. You're just going to be exhausted. Keep it really simple. So um, that could look like using the same prop for different year groups. I mean, you may do different activities with the prop, but keep the props the same so that you don't have to keep, you know, collecting in and, and giving out and all of that stuff. Um, a word on props, um, check out my training, Props Like a Pro. Um, also the freebies that I've got about props. One is Top of the Props, which are my ton top 10 props that uh, and how to use them. That's a little freebie that I offer. Um, and also I've done a video about using props. So check out that one. But yeah, keep your props simple keep your lessons simple. So because this is likely to be a one-off, you're not going to need a different lesson plan for every single year group. So I would plan a, a different lesson for each phase. So that would look like nursery and reception would probably have the same lesson plan, as would year one and two, as would year three and four, as would year five and six. Um, I mean, obviously, you're not going to want to have exactly the same lesson for reception as you do for year six, but it's OK for you to have the same lesson for a phase just to keep things simple for yourself. Uh, so you're not overwhelming yourself and, and lots of similarities between those lessons, too. So you're not kind of, um, you know, overwhelming yourself. Um, make sure that your lessons are really structured. So make sure that you you know you know you've got your structure in place and you're using that very clear structure so that you'll stick with your timings so if you're not sure about how to structure your classes for a within the school day um, lesson then check out my training structure for success which is all about how to structure a yoga lesson within the for use within the school day as a curriculum class so check that out i'll pop that in the comments too and also lastly don't be surprised if the kids and the school don't stick to the timings don't don't stress about it don't worry about it you can do what you can do so sometimes um and i was talking to this about this with one of my mentees the other day um and she was finding that when when the school when some year groups don't bring them at the right time and so they weren't having the the full length of the session that they were supposed to and this may happen to you so don't worry if you know a class comes late um but also don't let that have a knock-on effect on everybody else so say for example year one was supposed to arrive at 10 until half 10 um don't and, and they arrive at like 10 past 10 don't then it's really obvious but don't then do a half an hour lesson from 10 past 10 because obviously that's not going to work and somebody somewhere is going to not have a lesson so just give them just stick to the to the timings that you've got so if they arrive at 10 past 10 just think about okay which activities am i not going to do and then strike off those activities and just teach them for 20 minutes instead and that's okay that's not on you you can just teach um whoever's arrived at that time don't be surprised if different year groups arrive at different times it's communication every school is like it don't be surprised that's just what happens um and yeah remember to have fun because they are really fun um fun opportunities another thing to think about is how you can leverage this experience for your yoga business in general so do you have a community class that you could promote when you're in that school so could you take in some leaflets or some flyers or could you ask the office to email parents through their like parent portal to let them know about your community classes could you give stickers out that relate to something that you're already doing so a community class for example or if you also teach adults um, I sometimes do well-being workshops and I when I go into schools invite the staff to those well-being workshops and I've had quite a few staff in fact 
Yeah, I would say about like five percent of the people that come to my wellbeing workshops are educators who know me in the context of schools. So if you've got other events going on, don't be afraid to invite those people, invite the staff. So put up a poster or put um, a little flyer in the staff room or in the pigeonholes to invite staff to an event that you're doing. Um, yeah, so don't forget to you know share widely something that you're already doing. Um, and you may want to add on um, a little session for, for staff after school. I mean, obviously only teach what you're insured to teach. So if you're not insured to teach a, a yoga lesson to adults, obviously you can't offer that, but you could offer a little um, mindfulness session for staff after school, for example, or something that is, or like a relaxation session, you could offer that, um, but as long as you're insured to teach it. So yeah, what can you add on to the wellbeing day um, to make it a bit more profitable for you and to uh, amplify your message so that more people get to know you? So um, I hope you find that found that video really useful. I'm going to pop some things in um, in the comments um, for you to refer to. If you would like me to do a video on anything in particular, do let me know. Email me at julia at juliahankins.co.uk or comment on this video and I will see what I can do.